What is up, guys? We're back on Cutefish Desktop. Yay. So I'm going to go over what I like and what I don't like about this desktop environment. And, you know, then I want your opinions about it. I want you guys to go give it a try. Uh, this does not affect a GNOME install, a KDE install, or anything else like that. In fact, it uses KWIN just like KDE does. So there should not be very many conflicts at all. Um, it won't mess with XFC either. I don't know about the other desktop environments, but it is, it's a ridiculously good desktop environment. Let's just say that. So I filled out my dock. Uh, I'm still adding more and more things to it. It looks really cool. If you need a panel mode, there's a panel mode. I've already done a previous video about it, but here we go. This panel up top, it needs a cute fish icon right where it says desktop. And this desktop needs to be moved over a little bit. We don't need to know if we're on the desktop or not. Let's be honest. It doesn't need to be there. It doesn't do anything. It's just uh, if I close, it doesn't do anything. So more or not, Cute Fish needs its own logo. And its logo needs to be right there, just like there's an Apple icon on Mac OS. Okay? So if they add that, that would make the dock look a lot better. That's my first nitpick. Secondary. Um, when you click that logo, it could bring you to settings. Uh, it could check for updates, and checking for updates would depend on what distro you're on. So you would have to set it to search on Arch or Fedora or Debian or Ubuntu, whatever one, right? That would make it very useful. Uh, a force application button. So it would pop open its own task manager, and you'd be able to quit applications and see which applications have frozen. That would make the top panel a lot more useful. Second, the ability to add widgets right up here. Okay, so you can add more stuff like a weather icon or see your, your, your CPU or GPU usage and the temperature of your GPU or your CPU as well. Uh, things like that. Look to iStat menu for what I'm referring to. As for the dock, it's perfect. Okay, I would like it if when you installed an application that it recognizes, such as Discord, uh, Apple Music, Lutris, or something like that, that it would automatically ask, do you want to add it to the dock? By default, settings should come onto the dock, as well as your browser and your file manager. It should not come empty. Also, maybe a screenshot tool should be added there as well, and the ability to open up the terminal. That would make it look like a more well-planned out scenario than just having two things there and having nothing else, right? Because you want to start off in a desktop app in a desktop environment, you want to have the things you know best right there. Now, there is a distro based with Cutefish. Unfortunately, it's not very good. It's based off of Ubuntu and it comes with all the problems that Ubuntu does, such as outdated dependencies, PPA hell, and just whatever else mess that I don't want to get into right now. So there. Now, the one part that I like is switching between light and dark mode is as simple as this, but you got one icon missing. You could add something right here. And I'm trying to think of what to add right here because the setting button is right there. That's fine. You have your username and stuff right there, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what could be added there, but these two, I think, need to be balanced sort of in the middle more if they're not going to add a third thing. I would like a performance mode to be added right here. So if you click here, it could switch you back and forth between balanced, power saving, and performance. That would be a very much needed, you know, thing. All right, so let's talk. We go to properties, what happens? We get the properties of the desktop. If we go here, we should be able to select uh, display settings. I like that you could show hidden folders. You can open up a terminal, you can change the background. But display settings needs to be added here because when people uh, want to go change the display settings, everybody automatically knows to right click the desktop to go to display settings. A personalization button would be nice to be added in there as well so you can customize things that would be really cool now my next complaint is about change background we notice there's no option to add a background this is it this is what they give you they should add the ability to show what you have in your pictures folder right here 
that would make it a lot more intuitive. People would get to choose a lot easier and they wouldn't have to go through the file manager to be able to select a background. Like if we open up this and if we go to pictures, as you know, you can right click something and hit set as wallpaper in their file manager. It doesn't work in others, but I'm using the GNOME file manager because it's just more better and fleshed out. So we'll talk about the file manager in a second. Okay, so this is the file manager. It's called file manager, of course, and it is ridiculously oversimplified. And I'm not even kidding. Uh, if we click it, which we're going to do, and we go to properties, and it basically just grabs my home folder. It tells me the size. There's no options. You go to edit. You can see, you can select all. There we go. But there's no settings at all. That's a bit problematic as we're not allowed to customize this, which is, you know, it's not the best decision in the world because people love to customize and have a useful file manager. So let's compare it to something like the GNOME file manager for a second here. Can we just like, eh, thank you. So in the GNOME file manager, you're able to customize, do whatever you need to do, so on and so forth. You can go select all, there's preferences, show folders before files, yes please. Uh, expand folders and list view, no thank you. Open to double click, you can create link, delete permanently, search in subfolders, you name it. Now, other people like Thunar, uh, and Thunar has a lot of options, and there's a lot of good options. Now. My secondary thing that I like to have is Nemo. Nemo is my go-to desktop uh, file manager for when I need to do a whole lot of work inside of the root. And if we go here, you know, it has the same sort of options. If we go here, you can go to properties and, well, okay, there's not really many things there. We have to go to preferences to be able to adjust the behavior, the display, the list columns, the preview, the toolbar, the context menu, and the plugins. You can add plugins. Nemo is amazing. And honestly, GNOME can learn a lot. And right here, this, this, this thing can learn a lot too. The cute fish file manager can learn so much from Nemo, Thunar. Dolphin is a disgusting mess and it's just so outdated and so far from being modern i would not take any cues from it at all uh but you know i i really do it what does f5 even work give me a sec no there's no refresh either so in a nutshell that's the file manager it needs options we need to be able to customize it and we can't do that at the moment so on to the next thing Okay, the display settings. You notice something. There's no way to adjust multiple displays. Now, move all of this down. There's a big empty space right here, right? And have the monitors that you have connected up here so that you can change them around and do whatever you need to. Adding multi-monitor support, it matters because people are using multi-monitors more and more because they discover how useful it is for things like streaming, recording, doing work, you name it, right? You can have grading papers up on the left screen. You could have uh, what is considered acceptable in the middle screen and you the paper you're grading up on the right screen and you can just go through. But right now there is no multi-monitor support inside of Qtfish and that really holds it back for use on my desktop. And it very, very much saddens me because this is a beautiful desktop environment. It is so slick, it is so smooth, and I just love it to death. So appearance. You have light and dark, and you can change to magic lamp, which minimizes and maximizes according to a system effect. And the accent colors here are lacking. We should have all the colors. It'd be beautiful. Another thing is the ability to change icons, which you could add down here, because the default icons, while they do look nice, they're ugly. They're very, very ugly. I would rather Numix circle icons over anything. Honestly, I would give anything to be able to change to Numix circle right now. It's one of the things that holds me back because GNOME looks so good with Numix circle and the arc folder icons. Now, this doesn't need to change folder icons. All I need is to be able to change the application icons. 
All right, fonts is fine. The fonts that they use are fine. They look good, they fit in, and honestly, I think I would probably go with uh, bold icons more than anything, because I am a bold icon type of guy, but uh, this does look good. So I wouldn't change the icons at all, and I believe I just did by accident. Where's the... Uh... Yeah. Actually, let me try this. I'll try them. Let's go. Ready? Yeah, I'd go with these ones, except it's too condensed. Let's keep going right there. So source Hans say JP. Good. That sounds great. All right. User is fine. It's lacking in terms of making a person a pseudo, which they should add in. But other than that, no complaints. As for sound, it's bare bones, like really bare bones. If it was up to me, I would add the ability to be able to change bitrate and depth, or in other words, 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. If you have that ability, you change it to the highest audio settings possible. Uh, for pipe wire or pulse audio, do what no other distro is willing to do. Be all in. Mouse is fine, all right? Um, as you can see, there's no mouse acceleration going on, so everything works well. The fact that custom themes show up for the mice is pretty nice. Touchpad, enable, tap to click. Uh, there is acceleration here. You can see it. it's freaking annoying, but at least you can turn it off. Sort of. Date and time is fine. Default applications, it does not work at all, so hopefully that gets functional in the future. Language is fine. Battery is fine, as you can see. Uh, there's no issues here. Power. There's a performance mode. I wish it would remember. And the about page. The about page is good, but it only shows processor. It needs to have another one down below that shows the GPUs you're using. System version is 0 0.7, so that's good. So uh, that is it. That is everything that I find wrong with this, de this desktop environment currently. Now, if you've tried this out and you find something else wrong, do let me know. I am really willing to jump into a conversation here about this. And if the developers do end up watching this, please, please listen. I, it really would mean a lot if you did. Because I really do love this desktop environment. I've said it again and again. But it's just missing so many good features that could make it even better. Just don't make it over bloated like KDE is. KDE went from being, hey, that thing's pretty and useful to it's slow, it's buggy, and I don't want to touch it because it's so darn bloated. There's just too many options. I mean, if you were able to choose the basic options and advanced options on like the first startup so that a new user wouldn't be so confused and there wouldn't be so many pointless options, KDE would be perfect. Like, this is what you would call a non-bloated desktop environment. It's just functional, right? It's user-friendly. And KDE needs to learn from that. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Tell me about your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Check out the description to see how to support the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.